um, the invitation comes at a time where the Philippines is in the middle of their of our um, budget debates, and uh, it posed great difficulties for me to manage the committees that I, the budget committees that I chair um, here in the Philippines. So I have to to um, be uh, content with being present virtually. So my name is Pia Cayetano. I am a senator from the Philippines. And I'm extremely pleased to join colleagues from all over the world for the discussion on what parliaments are doing on futures thinking. I had the opportunity to listen to the speakers before me and have already learned a great deal in just the last few hour, hour or two. So let me share about our work. Um, in my country, I personally push for the creation of the Senate Committee on Sustainable Development Goals, Innovation, and Futures Thinking in the previous Congress. So this would have started in 2019. I chaired that first committee from 2019 to 2022, and I currently chair it in this Congress as well. This was the very first time that the Senate, uh, the Senate of the Philippines had such a committee which opens open the discussions on the role of future thinking and what it can do for legislation and policy making. This actually was inspired uh, from the um, practice in Finland on the Futures Committee, which I believe started way back in 1993. So what we do in the committee is we put in place, we, we put this committee in place precisely to track where we are with our SDGs, prepare for various futures, and shift our mindset to future thinking as a major policy reform. What I do as the chairman of this committee is make interventions on almost any piece of legislation in the Senate, including the national budget, to prepare for various futures and to shift to a futures-oriented mindset through the use of strategic foresight and futures thinking tools. So I'd like to give now examples of our work. Before the pandemic and during the pandemic, the committee held a series of hearings and invited futurists from all over the world to discuss the different futures of the Philippines beyond the pandemic, primarily on education, work, and health. I will provide more details on these hearings later on. On the national budget, I happen to be the chair, the senior vice chairman for the Committee on Finance, and I handle the national budget for education and health sectors. I have been working on future proofing these budgets in using strategic foresights. In the course of my work on the budget, we have provided funding to establish a futures office in the Department of Education, the Department of Health, and the Department of Science and Technology. A subcommittee on sustainable development goals under the National Economic and Development Authority was also created. We provided funding for research on the futures of food systems and food security in four state universities and colleges, I felt that this was extremely important because uh, it is these universities that would be providing us with the necessary research. We also provided funding for the future of food production, and this was given to the Department of Science and Technologies, Technology. Also pushed we also pushed to grant the Development Academy of the Philippines additional funding to support lifelong learning and capacity building in strategic foresight for government officials and employees. Again, this is very important because in our work in Congress, uh, we need to also ensure that this, these um, policy directions that includes futures thinking is happening in the local ground. So, on hearings in aid of legislation, um, when the pandemic happened, we filed a resolution to investigate how COVID-19 affected various sectors and their action plans to adapt, innovate, and prepare for all possibilities and outcomes post-pandemic. 
uh, we had here we had our Senate hearing and we actually invited Dr. Tomo Posa and Saku Puhani Koskinen of um, on the futures and uh, we had the futures platform um, from Helsinki Finland they discussed their foresight radar which charts how various trends and phenomena will be impacted by certain events. It was very interesting. I love this tool. If you haven't seen it, I suggest you check out this tool. Um, among the tools were the Foresight Triangle, which helped the committee in its work in advancing futures thinking in policy making. Um, on the futures of health, uh, in our hearings, um, uh, we, we ended up with conclusions that you would think um, are quite simple and common, but sometimes uh, we go through this exercise just to emphasize what should already be obvious. And the, these were that for the delivery of health services, the focus would be on primary health care, patient-centered care, increased use of technology, which includes artificial intelligence, use of simulation, in medical schools, uh, engagement with different communities, and pr prioritizing a holistic approach to wellness and prevention. Uh, I'd like now to go to another topic on the futures of cities and transportation. Actually, before we even had the committee on uh, futures thinking, I had already filed over 10 years ago the Committee on Sustainable Transportation which emphasized more mass transportation and included mobile transportation. So in the last Congress, which was three years ago, 2019 to 2022, uh, I authored and sponsored the Safe Pathways Network. And we actually passed this in the Senate, but it did not pass in the House of Representatives. So in this Congress, which just started this year, uh, I, I refiled the bill and upon further study, called it a name that was more uh, easily understandable by the public, and that is, and it is now called the Walkable and Bikeable Communities Bill, and this as well has also passed in the Senate. Um, this is very exciting for us because for those of you who have been to many Asian countries, not all, but um, Asian countries including mine, we have a very high population, uh, there is still a heavy dependence on cars. Of course, there are public transportation, but they're not enough. So when you look into the future of transportation, you can clearly say that you can clearly see the need for investment in public transportation, but also the recognition that um, with sustainable city models, many will travel very short distances, and therefore, uh, the use of safe pathways network, these are safe interconnected networks of streets and slow streets. Um, people can be more mobile on their feet, on bikes, uh, to, be, to allow them to travel very short distances. So also filed um, by, by this representation are bills on that are bills that support sustainable cities in the future, such as the Sustainable Cities and Communities Act. Uh, this is something that I hope to work more on in this Congress. I'd like now to go to the futures of education. Uh, during the pandemic, one of the major outputs of our committees was a futures of education committee report. I'm happy to share this with anyone who is interested as I am happy to also get uh, samples um, of, of the bills that are the colleagues who presented before me have also mentioned in their presentations. So our futures of education reported on how we can balance the use of technology uh, in the delivery of education, but how also you know, we need to strike that balance and not be reliant just on technology because face-to-face -face interaction and the the use of um, interpersonal skills must also be developed. I remember attending a conference, I forget in what country, where the emphasis was on science and technology, but one of the speakers recognized that, and I, if I'm not mistaken, the World Economic Forum also stated this, that it doesn't mean that all jobs of the future will be on science and technology. We will also need 
um, students or young adults, young people, or people who will reinvent themselves in the areas of creativity and communication, and in other words, still the liberal arts to move the society forward. So that shouldn't be a fear of ours that the jobs will only be in science and technology. So, so let me now um, let me now go on uh, into uh, future challenges or opportunities. Um, personally, I have an interest in the futures of water. The growing global population has increased the demand for fresh drinking water. No less than UNESCO states that 80% of the world ex is exposed to water insecurity with an impending water crisis to emerge in 2070. With water being vital to all forms of life, how do we meet the water requirements needed to support living organis 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 organism and their ecosystems. We will recall um, in history, um, societies were built uh, near water sources, rivers, oceans, and in a way we go full circle because without this access to clean water, um, it will create problems for us. I'd also like us to look into the future of food. According to the World Bank's food Commodity Price Index, food prices around the world have increased by 80% compared to two years ago. So um, the, as we know, COVID-19 has exposed uh, the, the vulnerability of our supply chain. This continues to be a problem in many countries, even developing countries. Um, I already mentioned my interest in the future of cities, as I do have a bill in the Senate on sustainable cities and communities, but there are models in different parts of the world that we can look at and we can um, uh, use in our own particular needs in our own countries. And of course, I've already mentioned the future of health, the future of transportation. These are all important. The future of education and how we need to transform our education to meet the needs of the work um, demands. So in conclusion, um, there is much to be done. I am extremely happy to be in the in the midst of like-minded parliamentarians and policy makers uh, with the view of using futures thinking tools, strategic foresight to really plot what we want for the future generation of our countries and of the world because it is we all live together. It is my goal that the future children, the young, the young children um, have a world that they're proud of. We are guided by the principle of intergenerational fairness, where we put ourselves 20, 30, 50 years ahead and to see if we are preparing that kind of future for the next generation. Thank you very much. Thank you very much and our warmest greetings to the Philippines here from, from all of us in Finland attending live today. Thank you very much. And now, last but not least, in this session we have a country that has already been mentioned many times. Uruguay warmly welcome on stage.